use the Simpson 3-8 rule. Now, uh, if you go to the next slides, let me give you a numerical example. Suppose we want to integrate between a equal to 8 and upper bound b equal to 30 of a complicated function f of x is defined as here. This is like say the whole thing here is f of x. Now as you can see this function it is not trivial to integrate and the reason is because you have some a lock of the function here and then you also have x in the denominator here okay x also appear in here so it is not a trivial function to integrate now according to using the so-called single Simpson 3f rule first thing we have to calculate is the width of the increment h which is b minus a over 3 b equal to 30, a equal to 8, so h is equal to 7.3333. Next, if you remember, suppose we use the so-called Simpson 3.8 rule, if you remember in my derivation, this is x, this is f of x, the complicated function is here, and the lower bound right here is A, the upper bound right here is B. Simpson 3F rule require to have four data points. Okay? And those data points corresponding to this value of X which we call X0, this value of X we call it X1, this value of X is X2, this one is x3. Now obviously the vertical distance right here, that vertical distance corresponding to the function evaluated at x2 and similarly for the other vertical distance. Okay? So the first thing we have to calculate is what is the value of x0, x1, x2, and x3. And we know the answer already. x0 is equal to a and that's why x0 equal to 8. x1 is equal to x0 plus h because the distance from x0 or a into x1 the distance is equal to h. So as you can see x1 equal to x0 plus h. Anyway so we can calculate x0 x1, x2, x3 and corresponding to x0 we can easily calculate f x0. For example, how do you calculate f x0? Well, f x0 means the function evaluated at x0 equal to 8. So that means whenever you see the value of x, you just replace by 8. Whenever you see x in appear in a function, you just replace by 8. And that's why fx0 is equal to 177.2667. Again, one more example. x1 equal to 15.3333. So how do you calculate the function at x1? It just simply, you go back to the complicated function. Whenever you see x, you replace by 15.33. Whenever you see x, you replace by 15.33. So that's where you can figure out fx1 is equal to 372.4629. Same thing for x2. x2 equals x0 plus 2h, which is equal to 22 something. The function at x2, as you can see, you just replace x by 22 replace x by 22 so fx2 is equal to 608 same thing for the last one x3 equal to x0 plus 3h which is equal to 30 
we did the same thing as the upper bound of the integration limit 30. So the function Rx3, you just replace x by 30, replace x by 30, and Fx3 equal to 901. So after you calculate all the function value, the next thing you just plug into the formula. Now if you remember, according to the formula, we have 3h, 3h, time h. And that's why you replace h by 7.3333. Time f x naught. But that f of x naught is equal to this value, 177, plus 3 times f x1. And f of x1 is equal to 372. We calculated before. And then plus 3 times f evaluated at x2. And from the previous slide, we already calculated fx2 equal to 608. And then plus f evaluated at x3, which is equal to 901. So plug into that Simpson 38 rule, the answer we got is 11,063.310. The exact answer, we can compute it either by doing the analytical integration by yourself or with using the MATLAB for help. The exact answer is 11,061. And you can see the answer is very, uh, the Simpson 38 rule is very good, very close to the exact answer in this case. All right. The next thing we say is this, can we derive the formula for Simpson 3-8 rule, but instead of using single segment, we want to use multiple segment. Let's say we use N segment. Well, if we use N segment, then the width H can be defined as shown in equation 14. Actually, there's a typing error here. It should be b minus a divided by n, not divided by 3. Where n is a num is a multiple of 3, like n equals 3, or 6, or 9, or 12. All right. What do I mean by multiple segment of Simpson 3-8 rule? Well, let us try to understand what is uh, the Simpson 3-8 rule in the multiple segment. I think the best way for me to explain would be like this. Let's say, suppose we draw the horizontal axis, which is x. The vertical axis represents f of x. And let us say the exact function is shown by the red curve right there. And that exact function f of x have the lower bound x equal to a and the upper bound equal to b. Now if you use the so-called single segment Simpson 3-8 rule basically you need to have let's say a four data point. Okay? That is for the single segment Simpson 3-8 rule. But suppose we use multiple segment Simpson 3-8 rule. The idea is very simple. Instead of considering one big segment between A to B, let's say we use it like we divide into smaller subdivision like this. Okay? And the idea here will be we apply Simpson 3-8 rule for that first segment and then we apply Simpson 3-8 rule again in this segment 
and then we apply Simpson 38 rule again in this segment. So in this case, like we use multiple segment or three segment Simpson 38 rule. Now the only thing you have to be careful is when you do this multiple segment, each segment will have a different lower and upper limit. For example, in the first segment of the so-called Simpson 38 rule, the let's say we call uh, this right here, this this location is x naught. The next location here is x one. The next location here is x two. This location here is x three. And the next location here, call it x four. This location here is x5. This location here is x6. And this location here is x7, x8, x9, let me see, 0, 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, this is X7 actually. This is X7. This is not X7. Okay. Uh, this is uh, X8 and this is X9. Okay. So what does that mean? It means instead of consider the big limit of integration from A to B for the first segment of the Simpson 38 rule, we just want to find out the area underneath the first segment which is right there and then we apply the same Simpson 38 rule for the second segment which is this red area right there and Simpson 38 rule apply again for this area which is the black area right there okay so that means as you can see from the formula indicated in equation 15, we integrate the cubic polynomial function F3 between the first segment which go from x0 to x3, which you can see right here. Apply the same formula for Simpson uh, 38 rule. And then for the second segment, you apply also Simpson 38 rule is between here and there that involve with x3, x4, x5, x6. That's why the second integration you go from x3 to x6. And similarly, for the third segment, which is the area right here it is between x6 x7 x8 x9 and that is shown is here okay keep in mind that x9 is the same thing as b that's why we have b in the upper limit so in my figure here basically we say n is equal to nine small segment and each of the segment have the same width which is equal to H the same width equal to H and H is defined as B minus A divided by N which is equal to nine in this figure okay so to make the story short, to use Simpson multiple segment, all we do is just up divide the limit from A to B into several smaller subsegment, and then for each subsegment, we just use exactly the same formula for uh, Simpson 38 rule. The only thing different is that the lower limit and the upper limit for each segment is different. Okay. So, as you can see, based on what I told you, Simpson 3.8 rule, it says,